Dive deep into timeless tales. Join our Bible's literature series where ancient stories come alive. Discover the Bible like never before as captivating narratives, not just sacred texts. Your literary adventure awaits. Dive into the Bible with us, a tapestry of tales and truth, where the sacred texts shape community conversations. Conflict and change. The Maccabees fight for cultural identity. This lecture explores Israel's experiences under Greek rule in the 2nd century BC. The narrative of 1st Maccabees delves into the conflict between resistance and adaptation to cultural changes brought by the Greek dominance. The lecture examines the historical context, changes that lead to this conflict, stories of those who resisted the changes, and the ongoing struggle for political independence. The lecture begins by discussing Alexander the Great's conquest in the 4th century which expanded the Greek Empire across a vast region. This marked a significant shift in political and cultural influence from the East to the West, with Greek language and culture becoming dominant. After Alexander's death, the East Mediterranean was divided between two rulers, Seleucus I and Ptolemy I, who established Hellenistic dynasties in their respective territories. Judea, where Jerusalem was located, was under Seleucid control during the 2nd century BC. Antiochus IV, also known as Antiochus Epiphanes, emerged as the antagonist in 1st Maccabees. He came to power in 175 BC and ruled from the Antioch in Syria. Antiochus is depicted as a sinful ruler and an opponent of faithful Jews. Tension between Greek influence and Jews practices heightened as Antiochus tightened his control over Jerusalem and the surrounding region. He attacked the temple, established a fortress there, and attempted to suppress Jewish religious practices. Antiochus banned Jewish sacrifices, prohibited the observance of the Sabbath and holidays, destroyed copies of Jewish law, and persecuted those who practiced circumcision. The resistance movement against these changes was initiated by Mattathias, a priest and his son Judah Maccabee. Mattathias refused to adopt non-Jewish practices and killed a Jewish man and a king's officer who promoted them. He then fled to the desert and assembled a fighting force to engage in guerrilla warfare against the Seleucids. After Mattathias' death, Judah Maccabee took over leadership and transformed the resistance into a large-scale military campaign. The Maccabees successfully resisted Seleucid oppression and reclaimed control of the temple in Jerusalem. The resistance movement ultimately forced the Seleucid to hold their suppression of Jewish practices, leading to a period of relative peace. However, the narrative in 1st Maccabees continues exploring the complexities of the Maccabees' fight for political independence. 
Judah Maccabee makes pragmatic decisions such as establishing an alliance with Rome to achieve greater autonomy. This raises questions about the balance between resistance and adaptation and the potential compromises that comes with seeking independence. After Judah's death, leadership passes to his brother Jonathan, and the struggle evolves into a political and priestly power struggle within the Seleucid Empire. Jonathan aligns with one of the rival contenders for Seleucid throne, utilizing foreign support to strengthen his position. Overall, the lecture delves into the themes of resistance and adaptation within the historical and cultural context of the Maccabean Revolt, exploring the challenges faced by the Jewish people under Greek rule and their quest for independence. The second book of Maccabees is not a continuation of the first book but covers some of the same events. Before the actual book, there are two letters from the Jews of Jerusalem to their fellow Jews in Egypt. The first letter invites the Egyptian Jews to celebrate the Feast of Dedication of the Temple, while the second informs them to the death of Antiochus while attempting to rob the temple and invites them to join in the celebrations. The book then recounts the story of the recovery of the sacred fire and hiding an important religious items by the prophet Jeremiah. It concludes with an invitation to celebrate the feast and a hope for a gathering of the dispersed Israel. The book begins with a free face explaining that it is an epitome of a larger history by Jason of Cyrene. The author's intention in writing the book is to provide instruction and edification. The author emphasizes the importance and sanctity of the Temple of Jerusalem and exhort the Jewish to remain faithful to the law. The narrative covers the attempted robbery of the temple, the Maccabean rebellion, and the reigns of Antiochus Epiphanes, Antiochus Eupator, and Demetrius I. The author's tone is moralistic and supernatural interventions are highlighted. The author of the epitome is unknown, but it is believed that Jason of Siren wrote the original work. The author of the epitome may have been a Pharisee due to the emphasis on the resurrection of the dead. However, claims that the book is a Pariasic partisan writing are baseless. The epitome was likely written shortly after the death of Nicanor, around 124 BC. The book was most likely composed in Greek, indicated by the style and the letters addressed to the Greek-speaking Jews of Egypt. In the passage from the second book of Maccabees, chapter 12, verses 38 to 46, Judas Maccabee ordered sacrifices to be offered in the temple for Jewish soldiers who had been killed in the battle and had worn pagan amulets. Some have interpreted this story as a support for the concept of purgatory, but that goes beyond the author's intended meaning. 
if these soldiers had done something wrong by wearing pagan amulets, why would sacrifices be offered on their behalf? For many centuries, both Eastern and Western Christians accepted the longer list of inspired books, the Alexandrian Canon. When Martin Luther translated the Bible, he used the shorter list, the Palestinian Canon. Sometimes, these seven books are included in Protestant Bibles as Deuterocanonical or Apocrypha. The New Testament's and early Christian writings provide some evidence for the concept of purgatory. In the second letter of Paul to Timothy chapter 1 verse 18, St. Paul prays for the disease on Nicephorus. The earliest mention of prayer for the dead in public Christian worship comes from the writer Tertullian in 211 AD. The issue of purgatory and praying for the dead was a significant point of contention between Catholics and Protestants in the 16th century. The Council of Trent, in its decree of 1563, reaffirmed the existence of purgatory and the value of prayers for the deceased. However, it cautioned against excessive curiosity or superstitious regarding the topic. The Roman Catholic teachings on purgatory reflects its understanding of the communion of saints. There is a connection between believers on earth, the saints in heaven, and the souls in purgatory. Prayers for the deceased are not means of buying their way out of a purgatory. According to Catholic Church teaching on purgatory, Catechism on Catholic Church, number 1030 to 32, all sins have lasting effects even after repentance. Sincere repentance includes a desire to repair the damage caused by one's sins, which may or may not be fully accomplished before death. At the final judgment, when the world ends, there will only be two possibilities, heaven and hell. Those who celebrate Jesus' victory over sin and death anticipate sharing in that victory. And they pray that their deceased loved ones may also experience the same. Stay enthralled with epic sagas and ageless wisdom. Continue with us in our Bible as Literatures series. Unearth stories and symbols in a fresh literary light. The next chapter of your riveting journey is just around the corner. Thank you for joining us in this enlightening journey through episode 25, Conflicts and Changes, the Maccabees' fight for cultural identity. We have uncovered the fervent struggle of a nation grappling with foreign domination and their unyielding spirit for independence. As we close this chapter on history and resistance, let us not forget the valor of the Maccabees, whose dedication to their faith and customs still echoes through time. Their story is a powerful reminder of the enduring pursuit of cultural and religious autonomy. But our exploration doesn't end there. Stay tuned for episode 26, Revealing Jesus' Messianic Identity in the Gospel of Mark. We will delve into the earliest gospel narrative, unraveled the profound implication of Jesus' role as the Messiah and Son of God. Mark your calendars for an insightful discussion on how the Gospel of Mark portrays a triumphant yet challenging path of Jesus and the unfolding of God's kingdom. Make sure you download and watch the episode before our next meeting to engage with the upcoming session fully. Bring your thoughts, reflections, and questions, and let's continue to enrich our understanding together. Until next time, keep seeking wisdom in the pages of history and faith. Goodbye and blessings.